Welcome to NCC Unplugged, the podcast from Norman Christian Church, where conversations, community, and culture converge. Welcome back to another episode of Unplugged here at Norman Christian Church. And my name is Jeff Terpstra. I'm the preaching minister here at Norman, and I'm joined by Matt Mastriani, our all things tech guru. Hello, Jeff. Thanks for having me back on. Yeah. Today's episode is a little uh, mixed bag, maybe. Okay. Um, Matt has a little bit of, of knowledge of what we're talking about, but really coming in blind to this. A and tiny so, bit. I'm a little scared, but... No, oh, don't yeah. be scared. Okay. Don't be scared. Right. Um, so this came out of some sermon research as we've been going through First John, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to hit this a lot in a sermon, and so I thought it'd be more appropriate for a podcast, and it really came from First John chapter 4. And I'm going to be looking through verse 1 one through 6 uh, this week, or as you listen to this, it'll be the previous Sunday. First John chapter 4, uh, beginning of the chapter anyways, is about false teachers. It's about uh, false teaching. It's about um, having either the spirit of the world or mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit. And how do we know um, what spirit someone has? And it's similar to what Jesus has, says earlier in the Gospels when he talks about, um, by their fruit you will know them. Okay, right. And so some of this passage has to do with spiritual warfare. Um, we'll, we'll talk on Sunday a lot about spiritual warfare and just some general principles of it. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get into some, some specifics. Um, John, when he's writing First John, isn't necessarily concerned with some of those specifics. And so we're not gonna get caught up in those. We're gonna we're gonna stick with First John and see see what he says about spiritual warfare. So that's what I'm covering Sunday morning when it comes to spiritual warfare. Could I say something real quick? Spiritual yes. warfare. That is something that I don't think churches we as a church here and abroad don't talk enough about. Mm-hmm. And then when I start thinking about it and wanting to talk about it, it scares me. <laughs> so it's uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing what you've said. <laughs> yeah, and I As we um, record this afterwards. Yeah, part of my introduction on Sunday was that um, we're I was going to disappoint some people because we're going to speak in general terms. Okay, you know sometimes we want very specific things as far as like what prayer do I need to pray and if I feel like a bad spirit in my house mm-hmm. or um, I I think sometimes uh, you know sometimes that's just difficult to give specific things like that right, um, right. from stage. But also, I, I'm not sure the Bible speaks to all of that. What, what's clear is that, um, and this goes back to First John chapter four: the spirit that's in with, within us is more powerful than the spirit that's in this world. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so, <clears throat> and that's not us. That's that's Jesus in us, and it's it's going back to His victory that He has. And so, that's the reason in this specific context of John chapter four that John. Um, John speaks the the false teaching he's concerned about is those that don't see Jesus Mm -hmm. as being born in the flesh. Um, So verse 3 says, But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist. Um, Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Mm -hmm. Um, And this goes back, if you remember our introduction to 1 John, uh, it seems like John is writing against what's called Gnosticism, okay. which is this belief that the spirit is good, flesh is bad. Mm-hmm. And so if Jesus is all good, then Jesus must have only been spirit. And uh, John even starts off his book refuting that, you know, in chapter one, that which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen, which we've touched. Um, John's like, no, th- Jesus was real. Mm-hmm. All that encapsulates Jesus, not just a a human body, but his teaching, his authority, his glory, all of that uh, we've seen, we hung out with, we knew knew that. So John is trying to head off some of this. It seems like he's trying to head off this false teaching and even calling it the spirit of the Antichrist, which goes back to chapter 2. We talked about that in another um, sermon. But I wanted to hit a little bit more on false teaching. here it's that Jesus wasn't of the flesh, but there's a lot of other false teaching in John's day and in our day. Um, so, so what is that false teaching? What um, you know? What would we categorize mm-hmm. as false teaching? Um, I've probably said things on stage that I didn't mean, and it just came out. And later, I was like, "Oh, that 
maybe didn't come out right, or maybe I say something and you hear it differently. Mm-hmm. Right. There's, there's different emphasis, um, and and so sometimes we need to be careful and not just call everything false teaching. Right. There's a lot of things we, we might classify as false teaching, mm-hmm. and so I came up with just a short list and um, some you different have like things. Fifty pages there. I, I do, and I'm not going to go over all of them. Um. Obviously, false teaching, maybe the first thing that comes to your mind is false doctrine. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what we just talked about with with what John's writing against, mm-hmm. false doctrine, and doctrine means belief, um, you know, the, the false false understanding of what was written, mm-hmm. the false interpretation. Um, you know, in our day, it could take many different forms. We could say the health and wealth gospel that, you know, Jesus wants you to be wealthy. And say that's a misunderstanding of scripture. Mm-hmm. I, you know, open up book chapter verse where it says that, and you know, there's some things that you could pull from different places, and we go, ah, that's just that doesn't line up with the rest of scripture. Mm-hmm. You may have one or two verses you pick, but you got to look at the entirety of scripture to see how that lines up. Do do you see like willful disobedience being the only way of false teaching when oh, it no, comes to I, that, or do you think it could be like simply? You think you're doing the right thing. You're just not. You're not purposely going against what the Bible says, but you think you're doing it right, and that's still a form of for, false teaching. I think so. Yeah, and oh, okay. I think that right. can be one of the more deceptive ways it happens. Yeah, um, some people with really good motives that just don't know better. Okay. Right. Um, we were at a church, not a church event, not our church, mm-hmm. uh, another church in the community just to see the work they were doing. And there's things that were said during the event that made me go, ah, I just, I, I don't, again, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're saying things and later they're like, oh, in my excitement, I said, said something I shouldn't have. But when they're on stage and a lot of people gathering around in this event, um, they had a great heart for the community. Mm-hmm. But they seem to be watering down the gospel, and um, you know, and and so it, it just made me step back and go, okay, is this maybe we don't want to partner with this organization, this church, whatever it might be. Um, I think their motives were great. I think they wanted to serve people around them, but they were doing it in a way where um, the news about Jesus didn't sound any different than. Any other news? Okay. Um, that makes, and I'm, yeah. I guess I'm trying to say that without giving specifics. But, oh, sure. No, I, I um, understand. So so false doc- doctrine can definitely be one way of false teaching. Uh, another can be someone's attitude and heart behind the message. Mm, okay. Um, and I think this can be a tricky one because... Well, let me just read uh, Philippians here. So Paul is in jail, and Paul gets news that um, some people people are using Jesus's name with good motives and with bad motives. Okay. And those that are following Paul, those d- the disciples of Paul really, um, that are under his teaching are kind of a- asking Paul if they should stop what's happening. Um, and so fr- uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 15, Paul says, it's true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry. So those are bad motives for <laughs> preaching, right. but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition. So maybe that's church workers doing it for the money. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a certain position, right? Oh, everybody knows my name if I'm a big preacher and saying different things. Um, and then he says, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains, but what does it matter? The important thing that is that in every way, whether false motives are true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. And so hmm. Paul's almost giving permission, in a sense, not permission for them to preach this way. He's, I'm sure he's disappointed, but he's saying, look, the gospel is being preached, and that's a good thing. But I think there can be other cases where pride can get, yes, can completely derail the gospel. Yeah. And it becomes all about that person. Right. Um, it can be all about their fame and their success, and you go into a a church or you go to an event and you see that person's face plastered around a lot more than the name of Jesus. Right. Um, And so I think that can take another form of 
false teaching. Yeah, and that, it, speaking from personal experience, and it, that's such a easy thing to fall into mm-hmm. whenever you're in a leadership role at a church. Uh, you know, going in with purely clean motives and preach the gospel and spread the word of Jesus, but then you know, every Sunday, oh, what a great job! Oh, you did so good! And, you know, and it just it it's yeah. it almost gets to the point where. You know, it can turn into that if you're not careful. And I think that's going back to Bible scripture about like always being on guard and everything and how the devil kind of uses innocent innocent enough things in our eyes mm-hmm. to kind of get a foothold and, and change it from God and Jesus to to ourselves. And that's something I'm prayerful about every every you know, every Sunday, yeah, every during the so. week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean the devil when the devil's tempting us and lying to us. He doesn't make it a complete lie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a half right, truth. Right. Yeah. Uh, when the devil tempted Eve, it was with these half truths, um, and her mind went there a lot easier than, you know, if the de- devil tempted her with, oh, well, God is horrible. You need to turn away from it. Well, she would have saw that for what it was, sure. and we would see that for what it is. Um, but it's this this subtlety mm-hmm. to his manipulation. And leave it to us to rationalize then mm-hmm. how to... Mm-hmm work in our evil favor, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I think another category of false teaching that, that Paul got to there in Philippians was that some some preach towards uh, controversy, mm-hmm. and more people will watch a YouTube video if it has, you know, some clickbait to it that has some controversy or you wouldn't believe this. And people would even do it as they speak against false teachers. Mm-hmm. You know, can you believe so-and-so said this? And it's just to tear people down rather than to build up. And we're warned about that in Scripture, too, about how we use our words. So um, let's keep going through this list. No, false teachers, um, there's some that have left the faith. Mm-hmm. Um, this can be through deconstruction and, and some things that they're learning about their past and what they've been taught. Um, it can be just their own leaving. Maybe they've you know left sometimes... As statistics say, people leave their faith as they go off to college. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be like that. Um, and so I, w- I want to stick to this. But the, the first one that we talked about, false doctrine being the biggest one, um, and what we can do about that, and even how that's tied to other things that come in our life, because I think that's probably... The, the Scripture warns about that a lot. And I and think about how, the context of that. Scripture was just being formed as it's being written to these people that are receiving it. And so for them, they didn't have a complete New Testament yet, as we do. Um, And so I think those living with John and Paul, um, there's a lot more confusion about teaching and who's right and whose name are we listening to, who's the apostle and who's not, than maybe we would be, Mm -hmm. though we still need to be on guard about that for sure. I think there's subtler. Is that a word? Subtler. subtler? It is now. More, you made it more one. subtle. More, <laughs> more subtler. ways of manipulation that can pull us apart. And so I want to read two verses that I think um, connect these two things in my mind. They're, they're separate, but there's a connection. And um, so let me read these, and, and then we'll talk about them. First Timothy one chapter uh, chapter one verse three and seven. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus. So this is Paul writing to Timothy, stay in Ephesus, so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrine. Okay, we've talked about that. Uh, Don't teach it any longer or devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Hmm. It's interesting. He's connecting false teaching of the faith, doctrine, uh, to myths and endless genealogies. Then he says, such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work which is by faith. The goal of this command, so the whole reason to, to stick to faith and not get caught up by these other things, is love, which comes up from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these, from love, and have turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they don't even know what they're talking about and what they so confidently affirm. Then another similar uh, verse is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16, 18. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them, he calls out two people specifically. How about that? Hymenaeus and Philetus, I have no idea if I said those correctly, who have departed from the truth, 
they say that the resurrection has already taken place and destroy the faith of some. So I thought this was interesting because we might think, oh, well, I don't know how we would categorize these things, mm-hmm. myths and endless genealogies in our day. Maybe we would say conspiracy theories? Yeah, yeah, I, I would um, think so. Conspiracy theories, uh, <laughs> endless political chatter. That does not happen, Jeff. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> As things that could potentially take our heart away from what really matters. Yeah. Uh, I know I've had conversations with people that um, it just seems like harmless fun to go down these rabbit trails, mm-hmm. endless rabbit trails, right? Yeah. And all you have to do is type in some uh, conspiracy theory into YouTube and you see how far down the rabbit hole goes. Yeah. And YouTube's so great at just populating more and more for us once we start yeah. looking. So, yeah. So, Matt. Uh, just for fun here in the middle of our episode a little bit, what is your favorite conspiracy theory? So this one uh, started as a joke, but then people picked up on it and kind of made it a conspiracy theory Mm. that pigeons are drones from the government. Yeah. And whenever they're sitting on power lines, they're recharging their (laughs) batteries. Sounds so stupid. They're recharging their batteries. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So the the man who came up with this started it as a joke to make fun of people that were believing all these wild conspiracy theories. Yeah. But then there was a certain sect of the population that started believing that. Mm-hmm. They, it got so it got spread so far that they missed the original messaging of this being a hoax mm-hmm. to now people believe that. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's one of my favorites because it it takes something that was clearly a joke. Mm-hmm. And people just ran with right, it, and right. now it's an actual conspiracy theory. Yeah. How about you? I really want to believe Sasquatch is real. Mm, okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. We were just talking about that, uh, my family. I, I think there's more likely of a chance that the Loch Ness Monster mm. is real versus Sasquatch because yeah. the, the amount of water... That right. has been unexplored in our world. Yep. I mean, the Bible talks about the uh, Leviathan. Mm-hmm. I believe it was mm-hmm. that one in the, in the ocean. I mean, who knows what's lurking down right. there? Some right. of the stuff that we found. Yeah. Is incredible. Well, I think, but, I mean, Pennsylvania, as far as Sasquatch of the Food, yeah, Pennsylvania yeah, yeah. has one of the highest sighting rates for it. So right. maybe one day, Matt. Okay. Maybe I need Keep to spend, looking, some more, Keep spend looking. some more time in the woods. Yeah. Um, I did come across the meme of, or I think it might have actually been a stand up comedian talking about. Uh, some people that don't believe in conspiracy theories, okay. they're like, you really believe the government's batting 100 for 100 and telling us the truth about right. everything? Yeah. That there's yeah. nothing hidden from us? And I'm like, oh, no, I, I get that. But on the other hand, um, I mean, you can pick up a magazine as you're checking out at Walmart mm-hmm. that's just full of conspiracy theories. Um, and so I have a few from okay. recent events here. So this is as of... March, what day are we today? March 15th. 15th. Okay, so okay. some of these may have been proven wrong by the time this goes okay. to air right. in a few days. Okay, so uh, a big one happening right now is Kate Middleton. Have you have you heard about this? I've, I've seen her in the news recently, but I don't know why or what. Yeah, so Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales. Um, and I... I just have a few quick facts. Like I did not want my search history search history to be full of this. Okay. And then that's all that is that's fed to me. <laughs> so I just have a few things. Um, so Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales, has not been seen in public since Christmas Eve. Okay. Um, and I mean that's weird for a public figure such as herself, not yeah. been to any speaking events, anything like that. Um, and was. It was released several weeks later that she was in the hospital, needed some abdominal surgery. Okay. Um, But was there's no uh, record from the royal palace of her coming and going from a hospital. Mm -hmm. There's a family member that went to the hospital, and it said they were released at the same time. But her husband, I guess, never has any records of going to the hospital to visit her. Okay. You know, if your wife is in the hospital for several weeks, it seems like. And then the biggest thing has been that uh, finally, the I, I don't know what they're called, the Royal Palace or the government agency. Okay. I don't know. We're yeah, not under we, a monarchy yeah. here in the United, the great U.S. of A. Um, released a photo 
Did you see the photo or hear about the photo? The controversy. I, I heard thing? about a photo of possibly being photoshopped. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Okay. So, so the 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 monarchy's like, no, here's here's a picture of them, and it wouldn't even pass certain news sites because it was so doctored. Oh, jeez. They're like, we can't even put this in our news story because it's it's been flagged that it's been photoshopped so okay. much. Okay. All right. And so now they've, I guess, taken it back, and they're and and they, oh, this is what it was. Um, some of these things are coming back to me. Um, the again, the royal pal- uh, Kate, Kate Middleton had an update. I don't know whether it was through Twitter, or Facebook, or what it was that like, oh, she's just dabbling in Photoshop, so that's why it seems oh so goodness. bad. Okay, all right. But again, she's never been seen in public. Like, what is going on? Right. This is two and a half months later. And this big royal figure has not been seen. So, is, yeah, I mean, just what? like I said, it's the start to a rabbit hole, Matt, if yeah. you want to explore some of that. Um, another big one. So, whoa, that's, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, no, no. What, what's the theory? Like, oh, there's oh, there's hundreds of them. OK, I mean, like, anything she you like, could want. OK, that that she died, but they're not saying she's right. died yet for some reason. OK, uh, that there's been a divorce in the family, but they're trying to cover it up because okay. there's been other divorces in the royal family and paparazzi and all that. Um, there is one that another, there's scandals between family members and maybe other family members have broken up. And it's okay. All right. All right. I mean, there's a lot out there. There's there's rabbit trails from the rabbit trail. Yes, is what I'm saying. Uh, so that's across the pond. So bringing it back to home a little bit, Matt. Okay. On April 8th, I believe, there's going to be a solar eclipse. Eclipse, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my special glasses and everything so I can stare at the sun and not get hurt. Good. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stare right at it. So uh, there's a conspiracy theory with this, right? Because seven years ago, there was an eclipse that went the other way from Florida. It was kind of like from Florida to Washington. And this okay. one's going from Texas kind of up to Maine. So it's forming an X. Okay. Uh Oh, no. What's what's at the center of this X, Matt? What is it going to be? But also, this one that's coming in April is going to cross over, depends on how you count it, seven or eight cities of Nineveh. Oh, so these cities are called Nineveh. If you know your biblical history, you know Jonah mm-hmm. was called to go to Nineveh, wouldn't go to Nineveh, got swallowed by a big fish, spit out, finally went to preach at Nineveh for them to repent, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the time is at hand, apparently. Okay. And judgment is coming, and this is our sign to repent. Okay. All right. Um, so are we all dying when this happens? Or it depends is this... on which YouTube video you okay. watch, Matt. Well, I hope not, because the next day is our uh, my wife and I's anniversary, so I hope we live long enough. Don't to... don't even bother giving her, getting oh, her a gift there at we this go. point. You I got to save. Okay. Go spend the money now on yourself. All right. Excellent. Um, so I watched... One YouTube video on this, mm-hmm. about nine minutes, and this was a response to one he did earlier, so it was kind of like added on information. Uh, already had 22,000 views. Jeez. Um, so he talked about it going through... So, okay, so <laughs> this is what he... One thing he talked about. Uh, there's been nine eclipses, ec- eclipsi, Ecl- eclipses, 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 in the United States since the United States became a nish- nation. Okay. okay. Nine. Nine. Nine of... A, Nineveh. I mean, it's clear See what's as going day. on there. I N-I-N-E is nine. That's that's right there in the name, Matt. Yeah. Um, and so lots of comments in the YouTube video about getting ready to go home, mm. about the time being near, about judgment. Um, and so you see how some of these things really start to pull people's focus away from anything else. Right. Yeah, and it's interesting because all of these, whatever conspiracy theory it is, start with some little nugget of truth, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, Kate Middleton hasn't been seen since yeah. Christmas Eve. Okay, Which, that's true. But then that's when it starts. That's when you know yeah. you get pulled down that rabbit trail. So. Yeah, and so this goes back to those verses we read, right? Um, we could say, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, but that was... So I looked at the history of this person mm-hmm. that did this video, and this is all the videos that he does, and so many just on this one eclipse, and then the next one that are are pseudo spiritual and kind of, you know, you get you have a Bible verse here and there that you pick, and it all of a sudden means this, and um, 
it's how he gets views. It's what he does. Right. And so you see how that connects to what Paul was writing to Timothy when it becomes this endless myths, devoting yourselves to these things, speculation, not of advancing God's work, uh, but really taking your heart and conscious away from mm -hmm. sincere faith. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we haven't even gotten into the political realm. Oh, geez. Um, you know, I, I have a good friend that has told me several times, you know, he used to be so deep into politics and watching news program after news program and figuring out, and and I, I don't remember what the turning point was for him, but he realized, what is this for? Mm -hmm. I mean, he knows his political stances. Right. He knows the, the big candidates, both um, fe on the federal level and local level. Okay, mm -hmm. what, what's going to change for him if he spends 10 more hours in the depths of this research and, and learning these people? And so... Maybe that goes back to what you said. Like it starts with something good and, and something true, but it can it can lead to places where uh, we just get so drowned out by speculation, speculation and myths, and just. Well, we talked about this going back to the uh, public school versus or, mm -hmm. or homeschool uh, mm -hmm. episode that we did as well, where you you get so ingrained in your certain camp. And how you think, and you just think it's that way across the board, like 100% of the time, you know, one, one political party is evil, the other one's great, and vice versa, depending yeah. on where you are. And then with the social media and with the, the rabbit trails you go down, I mean, it, it's tribalism. You mm -hmm. get algorithms and everything, you get sucked in to only hearing your voice and your view yeah. and like I brought up during that last podcast, it's not, it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's, there's truth down the middle, not yeah. on like the far extremes in yeah. my opinion. But if I think if you ever find yourself saying, I can't believe someone would think this, mm -hmm. I think you, at that point you need to take a step back and go, Oh yeah, there are people right. and start listening to other things. Be, be challenging mm -hmm. your thinking. And I'm going to, I talked about that on Sunday with, with this message from first John we have this confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. We yep. just listen to people that agree with us already. And so we're never challenged. We never think differently. We always think it's, it's our way. How could anybody ever do this? And, and they start, they don't even be, they're, they're not even humans to us anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just thoughts and ideas that are wrong. And so far over there on that side, that's different than ours. Right. And so I want to wrap this up a little bit by talking about, okay, what do we do with this? Yes. Uh, what do we do it, with it on a, on a larger level? Uh, so these videos are out on YouTube. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to write to every one of them saying, yeah, but what about this? And I don't have time to map out biblically that that's not what that verse means. Or, um, you know, that's not a sign of the end times. And even that word end times is what we're living in now. End time or last day is really what you mean. And so you're not even using the elementary terms biblically correct. You know, they're, they're using... Greek words that are really Latin words, like it's 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 just a jumbled mess of yeah. things. I don't have time to go through all that, but what mm -hmm. what is our response to those things? Um, I think some of it is is different depending on what that is, right? So we started talking about false teaching. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's false teaching, I think we need to take it more serious, especially if if we have a um, a say in the matter. Right. If it's the church we go to and we hear someone the preacher speaking falsely. Um, if it's, you know, we have influence within a circle of people where we hear this or we do that, or we're in a small group and we pick up an author and we say, ah, I think this author is off on this topic. Um, we probably have something that we could do. And so I'd evaluate that, mm -hmm. you, you know, your influence within that sphere and um, not get pulled into that thinking, well, I can make a difference. Well, if, if it's, you just behind a keyboard, you might not be able to make a difference. Um, evaluate your time and your influence and if it could be spent differently somewhere else. Um, and so this is the first, there's two things from Deuteronomy that I want to show. Deuteronomy chapter 13 it says, If a prophet or one who foretells my dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder, and if that sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, let's follow our gods, lowercase god, not Yahweh god, let us worship them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. The Lord your God, so Yahweh, 
is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart and with all your soul. It is the Lord your God you must follow, and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him. Serve him and hold fast to him. So this is our rule about Scripture. Uh, you need to test it with Scripture. Mm-hmm. You need yeah. to look at what God has already said. Um, you need to test. Here they talk about prophecies or dreams or visions. Uh, we could say teaching. We could say conspiracy. Anything you want to put under that blanket, you hold it up against Scripture. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the whole council of Scripture you know, what, what does the New Testament say? What does Jesus say? What did the prophets say? How did Jesus interpret the prophets saying this? How, do, how does Paul emphasize this in his letter? What do these words really mean? Not just in a, a dictionary that I have on my shelf, but a biblical dictionary, because the biblical dictionary will go back to original languages. It'll talk about what it meant when the Bible writers first wrote it. Um, and to do our due diligence with that. Uh, there's some good websites out there. Uh, that you can use for some of that, and to really test these things against Scripture. So I think that really goes to um, you know false teaching and doctrine and, and holding those things up against Scripture. Another one from Deuteronomy comes from chapter 18. Uh, it says, you, must, uh, you may say to yourselves, how can we know that a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. In other words, okay, let it play out. Mm -hmm. If it plays out and it happens, they're a prophet. If it didn't, stop listening. (laughs) Right. If after this uh, eclipse happens... And nothing happens, nothing significant. Turn off, unsubscribe from every channel you listen to, from every person that said this was going to happen, that this was a significant event in biblical history, that it was a time of judgment for the United States. You're done with them. They're a false prophet. Because they were saying, they were using the words of God, Scripture, in a false way. And so something I've learned to do with that is um, people will sometimes tell me these things. Hey, you need to know this because I'm a, I'm a preacher, you know. And so they'll say, hey, did you see this happen or this headline? And they want to highlight these things. And what I've learned is to, to think about ahead of time and to ask them ahead of time is, okay, if it doesn't happen, then what? That's a good question. Yeah, Make, make your yeah. decision ahead of time. Yeah. Because that person's going to say, oh, well, it wasn't this eclipse. It's, it's going to be one more. Right. Or this just came to prepare us. No, but that's not what they said ahead of time. Right. And so decide ahead of time, okay, if this doesn't happen, what, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, are you, are you going to change who you listen to? Are you going to turn things off? Um, are you going to realize the way they were interpreting Scripture was different and you're going to now do your homework and see how it really should be interpreted? Because there's rules of interpretation. Sure. We're yeah. not just making up what the Bible means by what we want it to mean. So um, some, some things there. And then um, I thought in a specific case. Okay. So Matt, if you came to me and you said, hey, Jeff, um, been, been doing this Bible study, listen to this book. Um, I said, listen to this book because I know you don't read books. Thank you. Uh, calling you I, out here. <laughs> I can read. I just don't enjoy it. So audio books um, are the way to go for me. And you said, um, hey, I really think, um, I don't know. I can't even think of a false, false teaching right now. Churches that use instruments, okay, are are clearly wrong. Yeah, so it's a position that yeah. some churches really do have. And if you said, "Hey, I've been going through that," um, can't show me anywhere where there's an actual drum in the Bible. Right. So. Right. So what I would do mm-hmm. is I would stand up on stage and I'd say, "Matt, you are wrong," and I would lay out some scriptures. No, that's not what I would do. Right. Uh, there's a rule that's given to us by Scripture, and sometimes we just call it Matthew 18 because that's where it comes from. But it's it's biblically how we should approach someone uh, when we think they're sinning. Mm-hmm. And false teaching, is all false teaching sinning? I think it, the majority of the time probably is, like when it takes the form of teaching, like sure. you're doing it. But if you're just processing that thought and you're coming to me as a friend, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's... A sin. I mean, you're 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 coming to me trying to 
talk through these things. Right. And just because we doubt something doesn't mean automatically it's a sin. Again, I so, think you look at the intent and the the why behind it almost. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's somewhat of, of what we're getting in Matthew 18. So it says in verse 15, 16, and 17, if a brother or sister sins, so if Matt comes to me and maybe he has a doubt or maybe he's teaching something uh, that I would disagree with, it says go and point out their fault just between the two of you. Mm-hmm. And I think when you say like the intent, I think that's how you figure out the intent. Matt, I know you said this, and I overheard you saying it in, down a few hallways. I just, I think we need to talk about this. Is this really what you think? Where are you getting this from? I, I see that one verse you used, but what about these five other verses? Or, you know, we we don't we don't see this from scripture. We don't make arguments from silence and scripture on anything else. So why that? Um, and then it says, if they listen to you, you've won them over. But if they do not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. And so I'm going to call, I'm going to call someone else that you mm-hmm. respect or I respect, uh, maybe an elder of the church, and say, hey, Matt, especially when it comes to sin, right? I, sure. think, I think what this is specifically talking about is sin, which uh, is even is a serious matter, just as, as false teaching is. And so I'd go to you, especially if it's a sin, someone else witness the sin or this false teaching and say, look, um, Matt, you got to cut this out. It says, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And so that's where I would go to the church and say, look, um, Matt is a member of our church. Um, and this is, I think, something we cover a little bit in our, our membership class even. Mm-hmm. Um, as a church member, you're we know you're on our team, quote unquote, right? We, we know you're you're for us. If, if you're just somebody off the street, I, we don't have necessarily any any authority over you, but as mm-hmm. as a church member, biblically, uh, the elders are the shepherds of the flock. And so I would I would grab them and say, hey, Matt's still saying this. It's 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 gonna bring division to our church. It's not who we are as a church, it's not what we believe, but Matt's still preaching it. He's still teaching it. In this case he's he's still sinning with it. We need to do something about it. It says treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Hmm. Um, in other words, you're not you're not welcome here. I mean, you're you're not going to be part of a a team. You're not going to be welcome to be any sort of teaching position, um, because we we take our unity as a church very serious. Right. And and so, you know, there might be th- s- smaller things uh, that we go, well, yeah, I, we can agree to disagree on those things. Mm-hmm. We're not going to see eye to eye on every nuance of scripture, uh, but some of the bigger things when it comes to if we went back to first John about Jesus being in the flesh and real, eh, that's something we yeah, need to agree on. Yeah, that's big. That's yeah. a point of unity. And so um, I think, you know, personally, so let's go back to something that may not be as heightened as a sin. I think it could still be dealt with in the same way. So we go back to a conspiracy theory. Somebody saying, Jeff, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. I think I have a responsibility. And I'm starting to learn this a little bit myself to go to them and say, look, I, I don't know if this is fruitful. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is the conversation we need to keep having over and over again about this happening in our world. I think it you can keep an eye on it. And if they don't listen to me, um, I think I need to go with somebody else and say, okay, maybe maybe they'll respect this other person more. Maybe they see I'm, I'm serious. Like I'm, I'm bringing somebody with me um, to really get them into the right frame of mind, to really get them to th- rethink their priorities and what they're doing, um, and even some more more people from the church. Right. Uh, maybe. Uh, I was going to say, I think it's so important to 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 realize that all of this, all this correcting, all this teaching, is done in love. Oh, absolutely, and not anger mm-hmm. or you know hatred towards yeah. somebody. It's it's they're wrong. You want to steer them back in the right direction with uh, with the truth. Yeah. And um, so yeah, the. The, the why behind what you're doing as well mm-hmm. is, is big. Um, one of the, the big things going back to conspiracy theories or just, you know, questioning certain things or one, one Bible scripture that always comes to mind is Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Yeah. So that's one of the other things where you can kind of put it to the litmus, litmus test of the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, are these things that I'm going down this rabbit trail, do they hold up to 
you know, what we're being told in yeah. Scripture to, to think about. And even if in your mind you think it's true, okay, but is it praiseworthy? Right. Is it beneficial for anything? Right. Um, and I've heard it said once, if, if you come to the conclusion that you're the sole holder of truth mm. and everybody else is out there and everybody else is wrong and, and, and nobody sees it how you see it, you may be further down the trail than you think. Yeah. You, you may be further gone than you think. Yeah, that's wild to think about. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's a very true statement yeah. there. That... Yeah, and so thank you for bringing up that verse. I think um, you know it's something for all of us to evaluate um, as we talk about this. You know, we, we've talked about a lot of things from false te- mm-hmm. false teaching, a, a biblical doctrine, to a conspiracy theory, to uh, Kate Middleton, to all these different things. <laughs> um, but we want to take our faith serious, and we want to prioritize that. We've talked about intentionality on this podcast. Uh, as fathers, we want to, our kids to follow us and what we do. We want them to pursue truth and goodness and, and God. And so that alone is going to have me pursue things of Scripture so that my children pick up on that more than reading endless stories and you know right. YouTube videos of all these different things. So just some things to think about um, as we go through and as we uh, or almost on the tail end here of finishing First John on Sunday mornings as we go through that. But I want to thank you for joining us on our podcast as we've talked about a lot of different things on this episode. And uh, just join us for for different different themes, different ways of going about this. We'll have a, a staff roundtable pretty soon talking about different things that are happening at the church and in the world of the different staff members. But I just want to thank you, Matt, for joining me for yeah, this absolutely. discussion. Not Thanks really for knowing me. what you're getting yeah, into. Yeah, no, no, I loved it. It was great. Uh, it's probably one of our longest podcasts yet. It but was. Really appreciate you listening or watching or however you're getting it to. Remember, uh, Norman Christian Church meets twice every Sunday morning, 845 and 1030. Of course, we have our live stream at 845. Go to normanchristianchurch.com. Yep. For all the events, different things we have coming up as, as Easter's getting close. Yeah, it's getting real close. And look for all of our uh, social medias. Uh, everything is at Norwin Christian. And uh, yeah, give us a like, give us a review for our podcast. Uh, doing so just helps push our show up higher and uh, get us out to uh, to more people to be able to hear it. So Yeah. Thank you, Matt, for joining us. Thank you for listening or watching. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 845 and 1030 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com 